So what I want to do in this video is look at this really specific reaction in carbonyl chemistry known as the bayer villiger oxidation, named after the German chemist who discovered this reaction. So, to get an overview of this reaction, start off with our ketone here. I've drawn acetone as our starting ketone here. And we react it with a compound known as a peroxy acid. And the end result of this reaction is we get a compound known as the ester. We essentially transform our ketone into an ester through the reaction. So another way to look at it is that somehow through the course of this reaction, you've inserted this oxygen, this oxygen that I'm indicating over here. You've inserted this between the carbonyl carbon Remember, the carbonyl carbon is the one double bonded to the oxygen, and the alpha carbon, the carbon right next to the carbonyl carbon. You've somehow, through the using a peroxy acid, inserted this oxygen into the molecule. Right, so how does that happen? We need to look at the mechanism, but before getting to the mechanism, let's take a step back and learn what exactly is a peroxy acid. Well, peroxy acid quite a simple it has a really simple definition it's it's any carboxylic acid let me write that as carboxylic as C acid with an extra oxygen with an extra oxygen let me give you an example of what that really looks like so let's say let's suppose I start off with a carboxylic acid let me draw a carboxylic acid this should be quite familiar to you. This here is acetic acid, or ethanoic acid, or vinegar, whatever you like to call it. Acetic acid. This here is your regulation carboxylic acid. So, how could you make a peroxy acid out of it? Well, you just slip in another oxygen this way. The rest of the molecule stays the same. Look here, I've inserted an extra oxygen over here there is this extra oxygen over here that wasn't previously in acetic acid so this makes a new compound known as per acetic acid the per indicating that we've added an extra oxygen to the compound also known as paa a short form for pa and there are many forms of peroxy acid paa being one of them MCPPA might be another common example you might find. There's certainly a lot of peroxy acids that one can use in this reaction. So now, now that we know what peroxy acids are, let's move on to see the mechanism of the bayer villiger reaction and understand how really do we insert that extra oxygen to form an ester. So let's look at the mechanism mechanism and switch to yellow here right let's start off with our acetone just like in the above in the above example and i'm leaving the ch3 writing off but assume that these corners here are metal groups let's react it with i don't know let's use peracetic acid let me redraw the complete compound per acetic acid and let's draw in the lone pairs for all the oxygens too. Remember, oxygen has two pairs of lone pairs. Here are all the lone pairs. That wasn't supposed to happen. Another one. All right, so the first step of this reaction is that the lone pair on the extra oxygen of the per per peroxy acid attacks the carbonyl carbon of our ketone and since we we then have too many bonds on the carbonyl carbon, this bind this pi bond breaks off. And the electrons push over to the oxygen on top. So what happens as a result of this as these two arrows? Well, we still have our two methyl groups. We have that oxygen. Now this oxygen has three lone pairs. So this now has a negative one formal charge. Let's draw in the rest of the oxygen. The hydrogen still attached to it, and the rest of the molecule still stays the same.
right? So if you notice that this oxygen gave up its lone pairs, these lone pairs that I'm highlighting in pink over here now form this bond. So this, car, uh, this oxygen now has positive formal charge. All right, so the next step will be, let me draw in the lone pairs to this carbonyl. That this lone pair of this carbonyl attacks this hydrogen and these electrons kick off onto this oxygen. What's the result of this arrow push? Let me draw that in, make some room. Right, so what happens next is the remainder of the molecule stays the same. You still have a negative charge here. Rest of the molecule stays the same, oxygen. And now this oxygen has gained the hydrogen. It has three bonds to it. Now this has a positive formal charge. Right, so what happens next is, let me draw in the lone pairs here that these lone pairs with the oxygen that has a negative one formal charge try to reform the double bond. In that process, the electrons between this, between this carbon over here and this metal group over here migrate over to the neighboring oxygen this way. And then these electrons move here and this pi bond breaks off and the electrons kick off up here. So what happens as a result of that reaction? Well, this metal group stays the same. We have our newly formed double bond, but now this metal, this metal group essentially migrated over to this oxygen. So now this oxygen is which what has this metal group. It has broken its bond to the original carbonyl carbon and moved over to this oxygen. So we have this oxygen and the metal group now attached here. Also, we can, and this is the ester we formed to the reaction. And there's also another compound, well, the remainder of the molecule that broke off. Let me draw that in. The hydrogen and the metal group. You can see through the course of the reaction, we've also formed a carboxylic acid. So the mechanism make it, makes it clear like how we move from our ketone to the ester. It is this step over here where you see the electrons between the original carbonyl carbon and the metal group migrating over to the oxygen. And essentially now this, the metal group now has its bond transferred over to this oxygen, which is why now we formed our ester. So the oxygen is essentially squeezed between the carbonyl carbon and the metal group over here, the alpha carbon, if you will. So that's the mechanism of how we are able to transform our ketone, able to transform our ketone into an ester by using a peroxy acid. In the next video, I'll talk about how certain aspects of regioselectivity when our carbonyl isn't as quite simple as acetone.